and welcome to Let's Talk ICT. This session is on testing PowerPoint for accessibility and the uh, assistive technology tool that um, Kyle Borak is using is NVDA. Do you want to say hi, Kyle? Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Uh, We're happy to have you back. Um, so this session is an interesting one. We've worked together on this um, topic for a couple of different practice sessions. And out of each session, I think we've both learned something. And so this is kind of a streamlined session on making PowerPoint accessible for screen readers and specifically for NVDA is what we used for discovering this information. And so let's, before we jump into um, what we've learned, um, it, we want to point out um, how PowerPoint works. PowerPoint is a Microsoft product that is built for accessibility, but it also is a, a software program. And so when we have a, a assistive technology tool that's also a software program, there's certain ways it's going to interact. So we want to understand how PowerPoint is set up. One of those things that we need to understand is that content is meant to be put in placeholders. And that is found in um, layouts that is already um, typically available in a uh, template that you pick, or you can create your own on a um, through the slide master. And we have other sessions that we've done on that um, that's um, recorded and saved in our YouTube channel. So you can learn a little bit more about that. Um, I'm going to see if I can, um, yeah, I just wanted to hide if you're saying a gray bar, that was the, um, menu for, for the host on this end. So hopefully it's clear. Um, the other thing about PowerPoint that you'll want to know is that content is layered. And so as you uh, put something in on a slide, um, it's, it begins the order of the, the layers. And if you, so as you add something, the next piece is layered on top of it. So, so those are two things to remember as we go through, and it'll make more sense for some of the different topics, but those are my um, key points. And then the um, piece for our screen reader is to understand how PowerPoint could be read. And through our practice sessions, and Kyle, you can jump in on this, but there's, for me, there was three ways that um, we found different reading options for um, NVDA or screen reader made a difference. And that is in slide view, like I have it open now, where you can edit in the slide. Or to the left of our screen is the thumbnail view that can also be read. Or if I um, open it up, this is presentation mode. So um, it can also be read that way with NVDA. And I'm going to stop here and see if Kyle has anything to add. Yeah, I, I was just going to add that I, I kind of like the presentation mode um, because it simplifies it and lets you just view each slide by itself, especially in that slide mode. Um, and you might be in that mode to edit the presentation, um, especially with NVIDIA and other screen readers. It's really easy to edit something, <laughs> hence, the, hence the edit mode. Um, but but if you're not careful, you can you could move one of your objects or placeholders as um Eileen said and all of a sudden your uh title is halfway off the screen and your body content is uh under a picture or something like that and if you can't see in my in my case if you can't see the presentation um PowerPoint does give you some help of telling you that something is under or over something but um it's I, I like that simplified presentation view of um, you won't you won't ed accidentally edit the presentation and that that thumbnail view we'll get to in a second too but that's just a a nice quick way to find slides too. Thank you. All right, so um, this is kind of the skinny version of takeaway points and also the topics we're going to cover. So. After we're done with the session, you can use this also as a summary. Um, it tells you the areas that we found were the most important to address for a PowerPoint to be accessible to a screen reader. And that is um, placeholders for titles of each slide, um, understanding the reading order on each slide, 
for different types of content, um, making sure that photos have alternative text. Um, and then things about color, this may not affect actually this, um, the screen reader, but for someone with low vision, and we wanted to make sure that we would address these today. So uh, color contrast, font size, and then the use of color in charts. We have an example or two of how to handle that um, as accessibly as possible. And the final point is any URL that's added in a um, PowerPoint slide needs to be made into an accessible link. And so if this is new information for you, we will um, give you an example of how to do that. All right, so I'm going to go into um, the next slide and I'm gonna um, ask you if this slide, whether it's in <clears throat> uh, presentation mode like this, or if it's in the um, edit um, view, is it going to be accessible to a screen reader? And if not, why not? And Kyle, I'm going to ask you if you can read this for us. Um, so this slide, um, it again, I'm in this presentation mode. Um, it, it does go to the slide in presentation mode. Um, And it does read, like I said, it does read the slide. It, it has that question on it that Eileen just asked. Um, but one interesting note with this, if I go out of the presentation mode and go into the, um, it's not letting me. If I go into the, uh, the thumbnail view. Uh, I'm not sharing my screen, but um, Eileen uh, is doing all the screen sharing this session. Um, it reads as I'm moving between the different slides. It will read that title um, placeholder, and so it seems like uh, nothing is read for slide three. It tells me it's slide three of however many um, slides we have in this presentation, eleven or twelve or something like that. Um, but it doesn't read any title. And all the other slides, because there's a title placeholder that um, Eileen's put, um, it will read that title um, as I'm moving over the different slides. And so I think that's that's the issue there, is if you're in the edit view or this um, thumbnail view, um, this title won't have a slide. And so it's a little bit harder to find if you're looking for specific content. You need to put a title. Yeah, thank you. And I think that's the, the most important point for uh, a barrier to be fixed is because if you don't, it's going to be confusing to the individual. And so this is how we would fix this barrier when there's not a title on a slide. Um, it, whether you're creating the slide or you're doing remediation for someone, um, it's the same. Uh, hold on one second. I'm trying to remove the Loading meeting controls. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go up to the insert tab and your, um, I'm sorry, the home tab, and you're going to go to layouts. And most of the templates will have this option where it is a title only slide. You see that? And if I select that, it now adds a placeholder for that, um, that slide for a title. And so we're going to just go ahead and add one in there so that you can see how to remediate it. So I've just typed in um, just typed in title placeholder example. Um, and so now um, if we were sharing the same file, um, he would be able to uh, read that for us. Um, but through the <laughs> through the magic of, of Zoom, we're not able to to share the literally the same file. So but that's how you would remediate it. Okay. Um, so let's go on to the next one. And, and this one talks about. Uh, slide reading order. And without going into any detail, I would like to just jump right in and have Kyle share with us how it's read with NVDA. Um, so as Eileen said, um, we're going to talk about some Z reading order, and she'll get to exactly what that means in a second. But um, I'm going to start basically at the top of this uh, slide as it's presented to me uh, with NVDA, and it uh, gives the text of the title slide, Z reading orders bottom to top. Um, and the next item, it says salty and savory. 
and it says chocolate, pineapple, strawberries, ice cream, apple pie. And then it says sweet and pickles, potato chips, pretzels, rosemary, venison, and that's it. Um, I'm, and we'll, we'll get to this in a, in a little bit also. Um, uh, NVA didn't really give me any indication as to maybe these are categories. And so I'm thinking maybe the orders out of the, the order is wrong because it seems like the sweets are in the wrong category and the, uh, salty and savory are in the wrong category. Yep. And, and you would be guessing right. <laughs> so, so probably what's happened is um, a direct result of how the information was placed in the slide. Again, it goes back to that first thing I said about you need to understand how PowerPoint is, is made with layering information. So um, if um, the subtitle salty and savory and sweet were added first and then the content for sweet was added next and then salty and savory following that, um, then that's the order that NVDA has just read it for you is the order it was placed. So um, Z order is kind of interesting. It is um, allowing content on this slide to move right to left top to bottom, and then backwards and for front front to back, I guess is a better way to explain it. That's literally what I understand Z order to mean. Um, in the purpose of making it accessible, we want them to match with um, the visual reading of the slide and then the order that it is arranged in the background. And so how do we do that? How do we um, remediate it? Um, this is going to be the um, secret for anybody that does uh, PowerPoint remediation. And that is go to the toolbar on the home tab and select arrange. And it'll drop down a little menu and you're gonna um, choose selection pane. And for some reason, maybe I tapped it too many times. It didn't open. Let's see that one more time. There it is. Okay. So it'll pop up um, in this case, you see it popping up on the right. And so this is our reading order um, over here on the selection pane. Um, NVDA is going to be reading it this way from um, bottom to top. And it's as I um, select the topics, it's highlighting on the slide, um, the title, the box of the placeholders. It's um, giving you that outline. So uh, it should match as we're reading. So we do want the first thing to be the title placeholder and that's correct. The next thing that we want is the um, subtitles, salty and savory. But then below that, the next thing it should read is the content of salty and savory. And that is not what it's reading. It's reading the sweet list. And so I'm going to scroll all the way up here. I've pre-named them just for the purpose of our presentation to make it easy. Um, but what you would do is um, pull this down. mute, And so it's kind of a easy thing to, to drop it in place. Or you could use these little arrows here um, to move it up and down. But now it's going to read in the right reading order for them. And then the um, sweet list will follow the sweet subheading if you move it in place. And so that's how you would do that to make sure that it's reading in the right order. Salty and savory, the salty list, sweet, and the sweet list. Um, the content is visually um, different. Um, than what I'm showing you, it's only for the demonstration. You can uh, obviously move the content itself and then make it match here. But for the purpose of this, I wanted to show you how it's done. Now, when you add anything, I'm gonna go back to that slide that we just added the title placeholder. When you add anything onto a slide or move it around, you do wanna go back and check the selection pane to make sure that everything is in the right reading order. And so it should read the title first and then in this case, it's only one other piece of content and that's the content placeholder and that's read second. So um, didn't have to fix anything, it's reading properly, but it's that's your secret weapon to make sure that everything reads properly for NVDA. Yeah. All right, let's go on to our next topic and that is- Hi, I'm uh, so sorry. I just have a quick question just on that particular topic. Of course. Um, 
I, so I use NVDA just, you know, for the whole shebang, but, you know, in particular the reading order. And I was told that Z reading order was the way to go. But when I've done like kind of like test runs in NVDA for PowerPoint, it reads it like, I guess you call it A order, like, so title up top. Is that like a new feature? Is there a reason that it reads it out? kind of the other way or I just want to make sure I'm doing it right yeah I well I one I'm going to address that first and then I'll let Kyle jump in but one thing I have heard is the different versions of PowerPoint like 365 could have some other options so you may not have to do the Z reading order anymore um, so that could be I don't what version are you using in PowerPoint we're I think we're using like the the brand new like I forget what it, what version it's called but it's not um it's one I had to ask my IT guys for because I had a hard time finding it. But I, yeah, I had done the the Z reading order like forever. And then when I went in the newest version, it was kind of the opposite. So I, like I said, I just wanted to confirm if it depended on the version because um, yeah. testing it, I was like, oh, it's weird. It's doing it the other way now. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad that you asked that because that is really um, things are always evolving and changing. And so this version that I'm using is PowerPoint 19. A lot of people use 16 still. So the tips we're talking about are specific to the format that we're using. So yeah, it's probably true um, that since you're using uh, an upgraded version or newer version, it might not have that option anymore. Cause I did hear rumors that they were gonna try and fix that. Um, so that's, that's what I know in terms of, you know the remediation piece. Kyle, is there anything that I haven't identified in that piece. Um, we'll kind of get to this too, but as the question was asked to, um, as things upgrade, um, always be willing to sort of, not necessarily like overhaul your processes, but if something seems to not be working, be open to doing it different. Um, there are bugs, there are new features that come out and um, there are bugs and new features and screeners too. Make sure and and um, if you can try and get some uh, testing um, with any of your documents. See if you can if you can do the testing with a screen reader, or if you um, can have that resources of um, hopefully getting feedback from people using your documents and that are using screen readers. If um, how they can, how how they can be improved, um, it's always good good to do. Good advice. And I just checked, so we are using 365 version 2202. I don't know if that makes a difference, but like I said, every, you know, every PowerPoint upgrade has been usually the, you know, the Z reading, but um, I will keep an eye on that. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be worth doing a little bit of research too, to see with Microsoft, if they have changed that for the version you're using. And yeah. If you do, we could do a session on that. So stay, who who's actually doing the speaking so that I can follow up with you? Hi, it's Melinda Dolezal from New York. I mean, it's totally, I mean, you don't have to do anything else besides that. It's just for my own, because I use PowerPoint for, you know, pretty much all of my meetings and we want to make sure that's, you know, we're doing what we can to make it accessible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you're open, we'd love to share what you're learning. So um, thanks for, for contributing that question and what you're dealing with um and, awesome. and microsoft's really good about accessibility it, if something has changed like a new reading order or a new preferred way to do it in um office 365 they'll have it documented so that's just a matter of doing the research yeah thank you all right um good contribution all right so let's move on to alt text and um so you might be seeing duplicates now if you see Kyle on the screen and currently talking, and then um, Kyle is actually in the uh, image <laughs> on our on our PowerPoint slide. <laughs> There's two of me. There's two of you. All right, so we're going to just jump right in, and Kyle's going to read this for us. Um, so we have this slide. It says, uh, add all text to all images. Um, and it uh, it does say that this is a content placeholder um, and I do have the alt text of it's a picture of me um, in a red shirt red and white shirt um, with my headphones on and my blue um, ITC background probably from one of my previous talks I gave um, but that is all that I see here the title and this one picture with the alt text um, is, is that all that's on the slide, Eileen? So there's actually two um, 
picture or content boxes, placeholders, and one image has alt text and one does not. So is it possible NVDA is just not picking up the one that doesn't have alt text? Yeah, it's, it's not seeing that one. Okay. All right. So there's a lesson right there. And so um, if the image is important to, enough to be in your PowerPoint slide, it is important enough to add alt text so that the person using NVDA or JAWS or whatever screen reader can um, participate fully in your slide. And so how do we add that? Um, again, this is for this version we're using, uh, um, 2019. Um, you would <clears throat> right click and then just go to uh, view all text. This is the one that has the alt text in it. <laughs> so, uh, but here you would write uh, in the box. Um, it gives recommendation from one to two detailed sentences, uh, the best you can, describing what's visually uh, appearing on the picture and not providing a lot of, um, you know, um, perception, judgment, or explanation of why you included the picture. It just should be uh, describing the photo. And then, Kyle, did you want to add anything on alt text? Um, no, other than that, uh, we did do a, uh, Eileen and I did do a presentation on alt text, more for social media, but um, alt text in general back in uh, August of 2022, one of the um, ICT talks. And um, it was a good session. Um, and the, the, I believe those are all up on YouTube um, for, for you yeah. to peruse if you want more information about alt text. Yep. Thank you. All right. Um, so moving on. So now we have a slide that has multiple images. And, and I would say for someone that I can be given a lot of PowerPoints around our conference time to remediate them to make sure they're accessible. And so adding a lot of images is the popular thing with a PowerPoint slide. And so in this particular one, um, I'm going to have Kyle uh, tell you what NVDA is reading for him. Um, and then we'll talk about any remediation we need to do. Okay, so um, this uh, slide, of course, starts off the title, talking about multiple reading order. And I'm not going to read you these alt text descriptions, um, but I'm just going to tell you the information I'm gathering from it so I can tell you, like, sort of what picture it is. Um, so I have uh, three content placeholders, pictures. What, um, NVIDIA is telling me they're content placeholders or pictures um, based off of the object they are. Well, um, come back to that also in a second and in, in a little bit. Um, but the first um, item I come to after the slide is the picture of the alarm clock. Um, the second item I come to after that is the picture of the lady, um, I guess, pointing at the alarm clock. And the third item I get to is the freeway sign. Um, and so that is the order they're present, present presented um, to NVDA on this slide. Okay. And so what NVDA um, was doing is um, reading the order it's placed in, but it came across left to right. So that's not what visually is matching. So we need to then go back to the toolbar um, under the home tab and select arrange. And the selection pane will pop up and we're going to need to um, reorganize these. So we had know the titles in the right place because he read that first. But the next picture should be what's on the left. And that's the uh, freeway sign that says the future. And my guess is it's that one. So see how it's highlighted. I'm going to just drag that down on top of the word title one. The next um, content placeholder has um, the alarm clock the, that's on the right hand side and so that's not the proper order we want the next one should be the photo in the middle for reading left to right so we're going to drag that one down in between those two images so now it should read properly um yeah and i have a different version of the powerpoint here with it already corrected and it does read that it reads the title slide at first um the freeway sign second the lady or yeah the freeway signs is the second item first image uh, the lady is the picture of the lady is the third item second image and the alarm clock is the final item and final image 
Thank you. And one of the things that we found when we were doing this testing is that on the selection pane, you see how it says title one, picture six, uh, content placeholder five, content placeholder four. Um, actually, NVDA was reading that to Kyle and then reading the alt text, correct? Um, yes. Um, it doesn't say those numbers. Um, so the like I said, in some cases, it will give me that the fact that it's a content placeholder. Um, so the first one says it does say content placeholder, but it doesn't say a number ah, um, that okay. freeway sign. The second um, picture is the lady and that that also has a content um, placeholder um, item. Um, and the third one actually also is content placeholder. Um, but uh, the previous slide that was out of order, the um, third um, or last picture, I think it said it was an, a picture or an image. Um, but just just a little bit of uh, technical um, exposure there, which isn't which isn't bad. But um, we'll uh, keep referencing this, but we'll touch more on that in a, in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, the what I learned from that because one of the things that I've heard through different trainings is you should change rename those categories based on what it is. So it would be picture of a sign or picture of a lady holding a clock. And so if you've got all text in that picture that's saying something similar, it's actually duplicating. Um, NV is duplicating that information. So. Um, my my learning experience from this as someone that does remediation is I, I wouldn't rename them <laughs> um, because telling me that there's a content placeholder is helpful because I know something is there. Um, and then the alt text should tell them what the the item is if it's an image. All right, so we're going to go on to um, color contrast. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, and in this case, I'm going to See if I can. I want to go into slideshow mode and presentation mode and enlarge this for you. And so enlarging it helps see um, some of the color contrast here. And one of the PowerPoints that I received a couple of years ago, that this is how it was made. The um, um, example that's on the left side. It was a, a pink background with a pink font on top of that, just slightly darker. And so the color contrast ratio on that is um, is uh, not acceptable. Um, the, the ratios for color contrast for a normal size text is um, four to five to one. And if it is, um, that's normal size text. If it's larger, it's three to one. Um, and in this particular combination, and so I've got the, the red, green, blue codes for the foreground and the background. When I plug that into a color contrast analyzer, it was a ratio of 1.39 to one, which was, it didn't pass. <laughs> so um, you'll want to make sure when you're doing a PowerPoint uh, remediation that you check this information. And so over here on the right side example, if you change it to a darker color, say the background stays this pink, but the foreground letters are changed to a darker blue, um, then the contrast ratio is, is passable. It's a 4.75 to one. Um, black would be better. It would be 11.77 to one, which would be very strong, um, whether it was normal size or larger. <clears throat> And uh, this color contrast is a very big topic. Um, and this is obviously just uh, PowerPoint stuff, but it definitely does pertain to the, um, the web as well. If you're looking for the specific guidelines as far as web goes, but it's basically the standard practice for all sorts of documents out there, um, you want to look for the uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG 2.1. Um, I talk more about that in some of my other previous presentations, um, but there there are a lot of um, rules and caveats around color, uh, font size, font weight, um, et cetera. Um, but yeah, that's just some uh, good practices. And um, a wave um, accessibility checker, we probably should have put a link in this PowerPoint, Eileen, but um, they have a really good color contrast checker. 
Um, yeah, um, WebAIM. Yep. Yeah, WebAIM. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, by their way, their and they have their Wave um, accessibility checker tool. But yeah, WebAIM yeah, uh, yeah. contrast checker is really good. I agree. And let me. I'm going to see if I can stop sharing this PowerPoint because I do have it open um, on my browser, so I can show it. Um, so that's what I'm showing it now. It's so it's WebAIM um, color contrast. Uh, uh, contrast checker, sorry. And so you can plug in your um, hex codes here, or you can just slide it um, to find colors that are uh, matched. The foreground color is going to be your font. Background is the background color. And then here it'll give you the ratio, uh, and then it'll tell you if it passes or not based on the um, size of the text. And then the two different levels, um, double A and triple A. Triple A is best practice. Um, and, and it gives you an explanation down here farther about that. So um, this is WebAIM um, contrast checker, color contrast checker. And um, there's going to be, for those that are participating, a follow-up email with um, this link and another one that talks about the technical pieces of the Z reading order. So we'll share that. And then a link to the YouTube when it's um, captioned and uploaded. Okay, so I'm going to unshare that and we're going to go back to our PowerPoint. All right, so that's the um, next thing we want to talk about is, um, and again, I want to show this one at larger. Okay, so charts using color in charts um, is um, not adequate for um, like comparisons of things. Because if someone cannot <clears throat> see color or has um, got low vision and can't distinguish the difference between shades, um, it's not going to give you um, an understanding of what the chart says. So one example would be to change your chart style to include lines that have shapes. Like this one has a, a diamond um, on one line, a, a square on another, and a triangle on another. And so how you do that is once you insert your chart into your slide, just um, click on the actual chart. And there's three little boxes that pop up on the right. And it's the middle one that looks like a paintbrush. It's called chart styles. And I found this one in the third option that drops down. And so um, that's how you would <clears throat> select this uh, option. And so it'll automatically pull that up on the legend. And it will also put that in your chart example. And it's not just even if you can't see the colors or whatever f for some uh, sort of visual disability. Um, I was, when I did my statistics, stati statistics courses um, and we were presenting a bunch of charts and stuff, it, you may be in a, pre a presentation where you put your presentation on a projector that doesn't have very good um, color um, representation as compared to your high def monitor at home, you might be able to tell the different four shades of blue that you put in the bar right next to each other on your high def monitor at home from two foot away. But can someone see that on the lower quality um, projector in the presentation room you're giving your presentation at? So it's, it's not even just if you have a disability, it's you may be in a situation where the colors literally aren't there because the present the presentation medium can't produce them. Yep, thank you. Excellent. And um, I just checked the chat. And also, I want to thank Angela for, for putting a link for the WebAIMS um, yes. contrast checker in there. So I appreciate that. Um, some of the research that I did included some of that international accessibility training, that 24 um, you know, hour sessions that they do every year. And this came out of one of those sessions that um, a group of folks were studying this, and they felt like that if you if you have to use color in a chart to alternate it um, dark to white. And these were the four uh, color codes that they felt were the best combinations for a lot of different vision needs. So um, I have this here with your hex code numbers for each of those colors, a dark blue, and then a turquoise, which is a light color, and then a dark pink, which is darker, and then orange, which is then a lighter shade from that. Um, and or the red green combo, which is the red, green, blue codes, which is 
what PowerPoint usually is going to show you. So if that's helpful, that'll be in the PowerPoint as well. Okay, all right. So the next thing that's important for an NVDA is uh, for a screen reader and, and also for other access needs um, is making sure that if you're using a URL address in a PowerPoint that's going to be up on a website or it's going to be um, saved on a, a thumb, you know, thumbstick USB drive, um, or it's going to be emailed to somebody. However, as long as it's accessible electronically, it needs to be made accessible into a hyperlink. And that means it's clickable. It also means it has a descriptive text that tells the person where that link is taking them to. And so in, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kyle, let him show you what happens on these two options. We have one that's just a URL address and one that's been made into a hyperlink. Um, and then any other aspect that you want to address, Kyle, you're welcome. Um, yeah, so I have the slide here and the first item I come to besides the title, um, it's the first thing. Um, it does read the URL, um, HTTPS slash slash SI.edu. Um, I don't really know what SI.edu is. I obviously know it's some sort of educational thing because of the .edu um, TLD on the end, but I don't know what SI is. Um, maybe super institution? I don't know. Um, but the next um, item, it does say Smithsonian Institute. And so um, I'm assuming that's uh, where that link is going to go to, SI Smithsonian Institute. Um, and uh, when you make that clickable with some text explaining what that link is, that is very helpful to know where you're going to go instead of like a lot of times on websites, people just say, click here or click this or whatever. What am I clicking on? Where is it going to take me? Tell me, um, tell me that it's going to your super awesome website. Um, <laughs> but one thing I will point out here, and I've been sort of alluding to this um, with NVIDIA, um, especially in this presenter mode, it strips away a lot of that metadata about the slides. Um, and I don't really know why. Um, it could be a bug. It could be just stuff they're working on. Um, software is an ever evolving uh, beast uh, with changes always. Um, but so it, the first line on all these slides, it doesn't tell me that that's a title. I can assume that's the title because I've gone through this presentation a couple times and that's the way you should make your presentations as we've talked about with the title first. But the slide here, it just says hyperlinks versus URL addresses. It doesn't tell me that that's the title. And the two links below, both the URL and the um, helpful link with the description, it doesn't actually tell me that they're links um, in this presentation mode. Um, if I press enter, obviously it's gonna advance the slide because um, that's you know, I'm, I'm in presenter mode. Um, and if I, and any right clicking or shift F10, if you're using a, a screen reader on any of those links, it's all controls to, um, make um, make the slide, slide go, make the PowerPoint presentation go, because you're in presentation view. Basically, the way to do this, if you're, for now, as of January 2023, if you're using NVDA, go out of um, presentation, presentation mode into the slide view, um, editor view, whatever you want to call it, and be sure not to edit anything. <laughs> um, but you can click on the link there. Um, that's sort of a workaround with NVDA. Um, and I also, in our practice, tried this um, presentation with Narrator. Um, in, I'm using Windows 10 here. Um, you could also do it in Windows 11. Um, but as of eight, Windows 8, Windows 10, and Windows 11, um, Narrator has, or sorry, Microsoft has made Narrator much more accessible and much more of a viable um, screen reader for blind people to use. Um, and of course, because it's um, PowerPoint, Microsoft product with Microsoft screen reader of um, Windows Narrator, uh, Narrator does a better job of reading those links even in um, presentation view and reading the slide title placeholders and, and reading all the specific content um, that is in the um, presentation. And 
I'm not here to say that NVIDIA does a bad job. It does a fine job of reading it. I, at times, would kind of like more information about what specifically is the title. I'm not, I don't want to have to rely on it, assuming that it's the first item. Um, but uh, if, if you're struggling with trying to make some of these documents accessible, um, do the best practices that we're talking about. Do your research. Um, if you want more resources, they're definitely out there of making documents accessible. Um, but if if there's issues with screen readers, it may be um, a bug in PowerPoint. It may be a bug in the screen reader. It's not your fault. If you if you're doing the best you can, um, a lot of cases you will be able to get the job done, and the and the content will be um, available to the screen reader user. Um, but unfortunately, uh, there are bugs when they when screen readers interact with other programs. Um, and they're not um, necessarily 100% um, perfect, but we do the best we can. Um, and so there's another third-party screener out there for Windows as well called JAWS, and that, that could um, work on this PowerPoint different in three or four other different ways than Narrator and NVDA combined. So it's a little bit of a wild, wild west out there, even though they've tried to make things work more consistently, but... Um, as long as you're doing the best best job you can of following the standards and um, putting the content out there, um, we'll we'll usually be able to deal with it. Thank you, Kyle. Um, and that continues to be the challenge, you know, with um, making documents accessible for someone that uses a screen reader because some of them do read differently. So, and depending on the browser that they're in, if it's a website, it reads differently. So. Um, as someone that does remediation, this is what I learned from the staff in our office that was there before I came on. It was a wonderful gift they gave me to, to understand that there's another level we can um, provide access. And um, Chris Roof taught me this, and this is that you now would save your document as a, um, a word-rich uh, text file. And so you go to the Save As, um, going to, um, I already have one made, but I'm just going to go ahead and put one on the desktop. And so it grabs whatever the file name is that you've stored in the background um, and it creates, you've got to select it. It will save uh, an outline rich text file and you hit save. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and replace that that I already have. And now let me see if I can get out of um, this um, screen share mode. And if I can stop sharing the PowerPoint, and then I'm going to share the Word document that I just made. And this is what it's going to look like. <laughs> it's not ready for prime time yet. You're going to have to um, now make this accessible. But what I like about it is it captures all the content. Um, it doesn't capture the images. Um, you will need to um, add that. This is what I like Chris does. She will go through each section and say slide one, and then make sure if there's images in there that she describes probably what was in the alt text as what the photo is. She's not trying to explain why um, the photo was put in there, but what, like as if it was alt text. So you can enhance this document with that. You don't have to do that, but it enhances it. And so you would need to make this accessible in the easiest ways to start with select all uh, and, and just make it all normal text and then go back and find all of your headings, um, whether it's a slide, uh, slide one, slide two, slide three, and so forth. Um, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're not going to go through this, how to make it accessible. But what I did want to show you is kind of cool, is that last slide on the PowerPoint about the URL and hyperlinks, how we had um, a content box that had the just the complete URL address. And then the other content box on the right had the uh, hyperlink that says Smithsonian Institute. Um, it preserved that and it shows up here. So I wanted to test this with you guys and see if, if I... Um, hover over it. Let's see. It, it So it's not actually a link here. It did not preserve it. So that was an assumption that I made. Um, so, But it kept the underline. <laughs> so, um, so at least you've got that going. You can um, copy that. I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to go ahead and add this, make it a hyperlink. Um, and 
we're going to insert. Links and add it right here in the URL address. And so now I've made it a hyperlink. So anyway, so that that would be um, the absolute best way to make sure not only is your PowerPoint accessible with the tips we made, but add that second document, especially for a conference, especially for a class session, um, or if somebody is maybe new to using a screen reader, um, that way they don't struggle with trying to figure out which view mode they can understand what's going on in the PowerPoint. That's my two cents. <laughs> um, Kyle, did you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, two quick things. Um, I'm actually kind of throwing an audible in this presentation. I don't know why we didn't mention it specifically, but in a lot of these versions of Office, especially 365 and some of the other later standalone versions, they do have um, accessibility checkers and auditors um, that you can run on your document and they'll um, sort of say, oh, this photo doesn't have alt text or this slide, this slide doesn't have us a uh, title or whatever, a whole bunch of uh, color contrast issues on this other slide. Um, that's that's a good tool to use as well um, for a way to start working on some of them. It's like you may not know 100% what is um, in the, uh, what all the issues are, but the access accessibility checker will help you with that. Um, and a note to add, um, as an extension of what Eileen just talked about with saving it as a RTF or Word document, um, a lot of people do screenshots or save as PDF. Um, please stop doing screenshots. They're not accessible. Um, and if you're making um, uh, save, if you're making PDFs of documents or of presentations, um, make sure and save it as a PDF. It might be save as. Um, in the file menu and you want to save it as a PDF document type. Um, a lot of programs have an export as PDF document or sorry, export as PDF option. Um, those are usually untagged inaccessible PDFs. Um, so you want to save a PDF, um, save as a PDF and that preserves um, any accessibility um, tagging you have any all the structure. Um, and of course, Adobe also has a PDF accessibility checker. Um, you can run it through there um, in, any, in any Adobe products you have. Um, and that is mostly my comments. I'm happy, definitely happy to answer any questions anyone has. And at this point, I'll stop the recording, but feel free to ask any questions. <laughs>